Long ago, on the beach of Tossa, there lived a little girl with her grandfather. Her name was Zorino. She had lost both of her parents as a baby. So little Orino had to go out to the beach to gather seashells and seaweeds. Sometimes she had to go out fishing into the sea with her grandfather in a boat. Orino was beautiful. Every young man in the village wanted to make her his wife some day. One day, after a heavy storm, she went out to the beach to gather some shells. She found a coral thrown on the shore. When she brought it home, her grandfather was very surprised and said, This is a pink coral, Orino. A pink coral is quite hard to find. Take good care of it. It will become bright like the moon if you polish it. How I wish I could make the coral into a kanzashi and put it in your hair when you get married. Grandfather closed his eyes to picture Reno in her wedding dress in his mind. However, in those days, it was not allowed for a daughter of a poor fisherman to have a coral kanzashi or a coral comb. Grandfather looked sad and stroked Orino's raven hair. That night, a pink moon came up. Grandfather told a story to little Orino. Long, long, very long ago, the moon broke into two pieces. One of the pieces dropped from heaven and sank to the bottom of the sea. It turned into many pink corals. Therefore, there are a lot of pink corals in the sea of Tosa. became thirteen years old, grandfather got very ill. Arino thought that he was possessed by a devil and asked an exorcist to exorcise him, but he didn't get well. Soon grandfather became very thin. Arino didn't know what to do. She wanted to cry. Then one day an old villager said to her, just make him eat some liver of a bear, then he will get well soon. However, the liver of a bear was too expensive for a daughter of a poor fisherman. It cost one kilogram of gold. Arino was disappointed. Heavy-heartedly, Arino went out to the beach as usual. While she was gathering seaweeds thrown on the shore, suddenly, with a noise like thunder, something round and black came tumbling down the cliff. In a twinkle, it splashed into the sea and began to swim away. It was a wild boar. Then a hunter dashed to the beach and banged off his gun at the wild boar. <laughs> The air smelled of gunpowder. The wild boar floated up and down on the water. The hunter ran into the sea, swam to it, and pulled it back to the beach. He was a young man. Orino was so surprised at his skillful work that she could not speak for a while. Oh, Orino took a step towards him. She thought, that the mountain hunter might have some liver of a bear. Excuse me, Orino said to him. She told him about her grandfather's illness. The young hunter, whose name was Yokichi, replied, Well, I just happen to have some liver of a bear. I'll give you some. He took a small piece of liver out of his cloth bag and put it in Orino's hand. Oh, wait a minute, 
I'll also give you some meat of the wild boar, said Yokichi with a smile. Since that time, Yokichi often visited Orino's grandfather. Little Orino gradually fell in love with Yokichi, but Yokichi thought that she was still a child. One day, Orino put some pink coral in Yokichi's palm. What is this? Yokichi asked her. I want you to take it. Yokichi laughed. Are you going to give me a treasure like this? All right, I'll polish it for you. Shall I come to marry you after I polish this beautiful coral? He said this half as a joke, but suddenly he became scared. Why? Because there was a strict rule in this area. There should not be any marriages between mountain villages and beach villages. Yokichi looked down at Orino. Little Orino was staring up at him. Oh, I mustn't come here anymore, he thought. Yokichi swiftly turned and dashed up the narrow sloping road into the mountain. He never came back down to the beach. Orino could never understand Yokichi's mind. She could only wait and wait for him. Every evening she sang these words at the beach A pink piece of the moon, where did it drop? It dropped into the sea. A pink coral appeared, deep, deep in the sea water. It's sleeping, sleeping. Orino's song resounded on the waves, and the words came to be handed down from pilgrims to pilgrims who passed by the shore. On the beach in the moonlight, we can find pink corals, I hear. They are beautiful pink corals like the moon. Some are washed up on the shore. The rumor spread far and wide. At last it reached the ruler's ears. He and his men got very angry. The pink corals of Tosa were a well protected secret from people of other prefectures. In Yedo, there lived the shogun, the ruler of all the rulers in Japan. If he should come to know about the pink corals of Tosa, he would take them all away. In a short time, the ruler of Tosa posted an official notice. No one can sing a pink piece of the moon. Anyone who has pink corals, big or small, must present all of them to the Lord. All of the villagers became worried and talked about this notice. Then one day, all of the men in the village were sent for by the magistrate. Orino's grandfather, too, was sent for. He came back dead. In the middle of the examination, he had a sharp pain in his chest and died. It was so sudden that Orino lost her speech. As soon as the funeral was over, Orino was called before the village chief. Orino, you sing a horrible song and spread a rumor that there are pink corals around here. The ruler knows this. I also know you've got a beautiful pink coral, but you are still a little girl and your grandfather has died. I'll forgive you just this time. If you sing this song again, I'll tear out your tongue. Tomorrow the magistrate will come to our village. Give your pink coral to him, or your head will be cut off. Understand? Orino cried in her lonely house, Grandpa, Grandpa, 
Little Orino cried and cried. The villagers kindly said to her, Don't be scared. Hand your pink coral to the magistrate and you will be forgiven. However, she didn't have her pink coral with her. Yokichi had kept it. But she didn't know where Yokichi lived. How dreadful pink corals are! Orino wept and wept. Then, tired, she fell asleep. Meanwhile, Yokichi was polishing Orino's pink coral for the last time. After having polished it with a charcoal of magnolia, he rubbed it with a powder of baked deer horns. Then Yokichi saw little Orino's face on the shining coral. He wanted to see her by all means. For a long time, he had wanted to see her again, even in secret. To speak to her only once, he stared at the pink coral. But he didn't know about Orino's trouble. Day broke. Orino got up abruptly. She went out into the sea in a small boat. The ruler's order is more dreadful than a demon's. Orino tried to find some corals with a net, but she couldn't find any. At last, she splashed around in the sea. The sight under the south sea water was always beautiful. Orino kept diving deeper for corals. She didn't know that a black cloud was spreading over the sky. It was an omen of a storm, but Orino went on diving madly. Suddenly the sea blackened and the wind roared up. Large drops of rain began to fall heavily. The sea got rough as if a lot of rabbits were jumping up and down. The next day, Yokichi came running down along the mountain road with a shining pink coral without knowing what had happened. He was surprised that he loved Orino so much. I want to show her this pink coral as soon as possible. Yokichi dashed into the hut by the seashore, but Orino wasn't there. Her grandfather wasn't either. Orino, Orino, Yokichi looked for her all around the shore. Orino, Orino, at last he found her. She had been thrown on the rock, cold and wet. She was dead. Orino, why did you die? I have just finished polishing your coral. It shines beautifully. Look, Orino. Yokichi wept. He put the coral into Orino's hands and wept and wept. Suddenly, Yokichi looked up. There were several samurais sent by the magistrate standing around him. Beyond them was a crowd of the villagers. Leave the coral there and go away. One of the samurais said sternly. No, I won't. This coral is for Orino and me. This is a ruler's order. If you don't obey it, I'll cut your head off. I don't care. Yokichi took Orino up in his arms. Where are you going? To my mountain hut. What? A young samurai almost jumped at Yokichi. Let him go. The chief samurai shouted and stopped him. Yokichi, without looking back, walked away with steady steps. He climbed up the rocks and went up the narrow road to the cliff above. I'll take Orino into the mountains. I'll let her sleep beside my hut. Yokichi made a firm decision. However, he couldn't make it to his hut. He was killed that night. The coral Yokichi had polished so beautifully 
was dedicated to the ruler. It was made into a comb and a kanzashi for the princess. But the princess did not know about Orido and Yokichi. Only on the beach of Tosa in the moonlight is this song sung to posterity. A pink piece of the moon. Who said that? She said that. Then tear out her tongue.